Hello, my name is Pam Bonke. I'm going to show you how to weave the basket from your start you got. Your start would have came like this, and it's dry. First thing you need to do is find a tub or a bucket, fill it about half full of water so that you can submerge this in there. You'll want it, the warmer the water, the faster the water soaks up, the softer it gets, because you need it to be pliable. If you try to work it dry, it will break. It only takes five to 10 minutes to soak your water. Then you need to unwrap your weaver. I will call these the spines or spokes, and this is the long one is your weaver. And they've already had your basket all divided out into set groups of two reeds. You just go over one set, under, over a set, under a set. The way they have this design, it's an odd number of spokes. So the next time you come around, if you were over, if you went over it the last time you went around, the next time you're gonna go under it. If you ever come out twice in a row, you've made a mistake somewhere, you need to go back and find it and fix it but you're just gonna over and under and keep going around and around until you finish your first weaver or until the bottom of the basket is as big as you want the basket to be. And then I will show you how to add another one. One of the things that the baskets were traditionally made of, this is uh, actually commercial reed, which is rattan. Your starts are made with size three spokes and uh, I think they said they use size one to start the weaving, but then you'll use, then they're gonna do size two. The smaller the number, the smaller the reed. Traditionally, baskets would have been made out of honeysuckle and buck brush runners. Commercial rattan is usually pretty easy to get. Our heritage center sells it. There, you'll have to find another few other places that'll sell it. When you get to the end of your run of weaver, you want it to end on what is gonna be the inside of your basket. So this one where they started it, it's got some sticking up, that's gonna be the inside. So I put it right here on the inside. You'll wanna have a few extra weavers in your water to stay wet. Take it and unwrap it. Then what you're gonna do is right here where this one ended on the inside, you're gonna take the next one and lay it just like you're gonna finish it, but you're gonna overlap it just a little bit on the inside of the basket. Always make sure the joints where you Weave it uh, where you start a new one or it's on the inside of the basket. Hold it and just keep following your over and under. You should just complete the pattern you already had. One, sometimes you may have to hold it till you get it around one time, but usually it'll stay. After the basket dries, you can trim those off a little bit. You don't want to trim them too short before it dries because the reed shrinks a little bit as it dries. When you're ready for your basket to turn up, what I do is I push up with my finger just a little bit and pull this weaver just a little bit tighter, or sometimes I'll work it from this way and push it down. Whichever is easier for you to pull up or push down. Just make sure you keep the inside of your basket the inside, and you pull this tighter as you go around. I have found it's easier to weave if you work right up here close to the basket. If you pull your hand out here, then you're constantly trying to pull this and tighten it back up. But if you'll work right here at it, it will stay. And if you push it, you just have to now let the, the reed know that you're the boss. Bend it how you want it. You want to keep it wet. If it dries, starts to dry out and turn white, you just have to dip it back in the water for a few seconds. So you always want to keep a tub of water there. When you make baskets, Cherokee basket traditionally is double walled. This will only be a single wall because when we first start teaching, we teach single wall first and then go to double wall. The difference in those, you can, as you can tell here, I have a couple here, single wall, can be wiggled a little bit here. That's a single wall. Double wall, I turn it back down and wove back over the outside and it's a lot sturdier. You can't wiggle it near as much. And baskets were used for all kinds of things. You can use them to pick berries, you can use them to store things in. Just anything you want to use. Once you get the sides going up good, it works pretty quick. You want to make sure when you weave it to the top, you don't weave all the way to the end of your spines. You have, you'll need about three to four inches of spine to finish the top off. Some people add colored reed, you can add smoked reed to it. I'm sure traditionally we just did it without any dyes used because that was more functional. Then as people started using for trade, they started adding colors to it. Uh, you can, traditional dyes are pokeberries, blood root, walnut holes, things they found out in the natural yellow onion skins. 
When you get to the end of it, you want to make sure again that the end of your weaver is on the inside of your basket if you're doing a single wall. If you're doing a double wall, you put the first layer, you put everything on the outside. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take this and measure over about three sets of spines and that's where we're going to trim these off at. After you get them trimmed all off even, you're going to take it. Take this set of spines in front of the set next to it, behind the next set and just tuck it inside your basket. In front of the set, behind the next set and tuck it in your basket. And you're just going to do this all the way around. So all the little tails are on the inside of your basket. This is just a simple top tuck. Behind, in front of the one next to it, then behind and inside the basket. Then what you'll do is when you get to this very end here, this little loop made, you're gonna take these two and put them inside that hole there and push them down to make it even. And there's the finished top of the basket.